If the dead are already with Christ, why must they rise? Are the dead aware that they are with the Lord? So the question is, if the dead are already with Christ, why do they have to rise? And are the dead aware that they are with the Lord? So get 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 8. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. What does 2 Corinthians 5, 8 tell you about what happens when a believer dies? Part of them is present with the Lord, but not all of them, right? Their soul is present with the Lord, but what is their soul missing? It's missing a body, right? They're absent from the body. So when a believer dies during the dispensation of grace, your body is going to remain here on earth in whatever form it is. Your soul will depart the earth. Your soul will be in heaven, but the body will be here on earth. Notice 1 Thessalonians 4.16. So what that means is right now there's a bunch of members of the body of Christ. They are in heaven. They are with the Lord, but they don't have a body. Look with me at 1 Thessalonians 4.16. 1 Thessalonians 4.16. For the Lord himself shall, notice this, descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Look at verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, notice this, will God bring with him. In verse 16, what direction does the Lord move? He descends, right? He descends, and it says, the dead in Christ shall rise first. But verse 14 says that the dead in Christ will do what? They're brought with him. Isn't that what it says? 1 Thessalonians 4, 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So the dead in Christ, what direction are they moving? Down. What does it say? What's the Lord doing? If the Lord is descending and the dead in Christ are brought with him, then what are they doing? They're descending. So how does it say that the dead in Christ shall rise first? And the simple answer is the idea of rising from the dead isn't, it's not referencing a vertical motion. It's referencing a, body, a soul being placed back into a body. The dead in Christ right now are in heaven. They are not asleep. They're present there. But what they are awaiting is they are awaiting the body that is prepared for them. Look with me at 1 Corinthians 15, 51. 1 Corinthians 15 and 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. When it says we shall not all sleep, it's obviously a reference saying we're not all going to die. There are some that live up to the time of the catching up. But we shall all be changed. So not every member of the body of Christ dies, but every member of the body of Christ gets a new body. They're all changed. Verse 52, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. 
one of the things that people commonly say today is that if you look at the beginning of the dispensation of grace, there was a transition period into the dispensation of grace. So therefore, there's going to be a transition period at the end of the dispensation of grace. Is that scripturally correct? How quickly does the dispensation of grace end? Yeah, in a moment, right? So there's no transition period at the end of the dispensation of grace. The dispensation of grace comes to an instantaneous end when the catching up occurs in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Now what that tells you, just to state the obvious, you need to get saved immediately. Is there any clear forerunner? Is, is there any clear, like for example, sometimes your calendar will give you an alert and it'll say, beep, in 15 minutes you have an appointment or you have, a, you know, somewhere you have to be and it gives you a little reminder. Is there any reminder like that about the end of the dispensation of grace? Can you say, look, I'm not going to get saved now. I've set a re reminder and two days before the dispensation of grace is, is going to end, I'm going to believe the gospel at that point in time. There's no such thing. The dispensation of grace ends in, ends in an instant, and that's why the proper time to get saved is immediately. So what all those verses tell you is that the raising from the dead, and look with me at, at verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. That's a reference to folks putting on their new spiritual bodies that are incorruptible. So the answer to the first question, if the dead are already with Christ, why must they rise? Well, they need to get a new body. When they're absent from the body, they're present with the Lord. When they're present with the Lord, they're absent from the body, and they are awaiting the new spiritual celestial body that God has prepared for them. The second part of the question was, are the dead aware that they are with the Lord? Get Luke 16, verse 19. Luke 16, verse 19. Luke 16 contains the account of the rich man and Lazarus. I say that it is the account of the rich man and Lazarus because it's never said to be a parable. And the Lord never teaches a parable where people have proper names. And the Lord never explains the meaning of this account which he normally does with most parables. So Luke 16, 19 to 31 is not a parable, it's an account. In other words, it's a description, it's a recording of events that actually happened. Verse 19, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Notice verse 25. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. So let me ask this question. Are the dead aware that they are with the Lord? Well, does Abraham know that he's in a place of blessedness? Is he fully alert and conscious? Does he understand that they're in a place of blessedness? He realized there's a place of torment. So the answer is, are the dead aware that they're with the Lord? Yes, they're not unconscious. They're not sleeping. They're not, you know, in some other state of lack of knowledge. Abraham knows exactly where he is. 
and he understands exactly the situation in terms of hell, paradise, the, the great gulf between them.